All right, so finishing up 6.6 .6 notes. And so we said yesterday that discounts decrease a price and markups increase a price. Of course, a markup is going to be applied to an item before it hits the shelves. They're not, gonna, they're not gonna put it on the shelf and then you go back the next day and you're like, wait, that price went up on that? That doesn't typically happen. Markups, markups are gonna be where they buy something from a provider and then they increase the price and sell it so they can make a profit off of what they bought it for. Okay, so that's, you know, if they sold it for what they bought it for, they're not gonna make any money off of it and they're not gonna be able to pay their employees or their bills, all that stuff. So first of all, how do I find a discount or markup? Well, it's very simple to do. Take the percent of the discount or take the percent of the markup and multiply it to the price, the original price. So if I've got a $60 Xbox game and it's 20% off, to find out how much money you're saving, take 20% or 0.2 of, or times that price, and that gives you $12. You will save $12. That's not what you're gonna pay. It's what you would save. So if the question said, how much are you gonna save? That's what you would do. If the question then asked you, how much are you gonna pay? Which is a pretty obvious next question. You would take $60 and you would subtract how much you're saving. And that tells you, you would pay $48 for it. So to go from the original price to the sale price takes two steps. There's a multiplying step and there's a subtraction step for a discount. Okay, now we'll talk about a shortcut here in a second. For markup, it's the same thing. If the markup percent is 20%, which is very low, by the way, if the markup is 20%, take that as a decimal, and you're also going to multiply that. And that's not going to tell you what you're paying, but it's going to tell you how much they're going to increase the price by. So if the question says how much they increase in the price by, $1.60. If the question says how much are you going to pay for it, which most questions do, the obvious next step is to add that $1.60 on to what they paid for it, and you're going to pay $9.60. Okay, so let's get to the shortcut then. How can I eliminate one of these steps? Well, if these pair of shorts are 25% off, if I do 25%, that's going to tell me how much I'm saving. But if the answer is only concerned, the question is only concerned with me telling how much I'm going to pay, then why would I need to know how much I'm saving? Well, I'll just subtract it away, right? Yeah, but you don't actually need to subtract it away. Instead, what you could do is just determine what percent you're paying. So if something's 100% full price marked off 25%, you're only going to pay 75%. So instead of using 25%, use 75% or 0.75, and it jumps you right to the same answer with one less step. Because you can do that subtraction in your head. You can do 100 minus 25 in your head. Can you still use the longer method? Absolutely. If that's what you like to do, that's perfectly fine. But the issue I run into when I grade your quizzes next week is I guarantee the students that are doing the long way, I'll have about six of them that are going to get $8.75. They're going to circle it and walk away. Is $8.75 what you pay for those shorts? No, that's what you're saving. They're forgetting to subtract it away. So if you think, hmm, I tend to forget steps, maybe I should, maybe I should try to take the shortcut then. Right, so I don't have to forget that step because it's really easy to just write 875 down and walk away. 875 is what you're saving, not what you're paying. 2625 is what you're paying. Okay. Markups also have a shortcut. But unlike a discount, which saves you money and you decrease the percentage to 75, markups are going to have you pay more money and you're going to increase the percentage. So if they're marking it up 120%, don't use 1.2 because that's just going to tell you what they're marking it up by. Instead, use 220% or 2.2. And that's going to jump you right to the answer. Both answers give you 110. One requires two steps and one just requires one step. And again, I see a lot of students, they'll use 120%, they'll multiply to 50, they'll do 1.2 times 50, they'll get 60, they'll circle 60 and walk away. 60 is not the sale price of the bike. $110 added on is the sale price of the bike. Use the shortcut and you don't make that mistake. Okay, so yesterday we were looking at two homework questions and trying to use the shortcut on both of them. Yesterday we did number eight from the homework where we said if something is 60% off that means you're going to pay 40% of the price 
So you're, it's, it's more than half off. And so if you apply 40% to $69.80, that means the price of this item is now $27.92. We always use two decimal places for money. Okay. Now we're gonna look at number 17. So if you don't have your calculators out, get them out now, because we're going to have to use them obviously to multiply by these decimals. Number 17 says, find the sale, selling price. The selling price is the same as the sale price. What are you gonna pay for it? The cost to the store is $50. The markup is 10%. So we need to use the shortcut here. I guess we don't have to, but I'm going to use the shortcut here to determine what we're gonna pay after this has been marked up 10%. Remember, the original price of the item when they paid for it was 100%. So if it was marked up 10%, what percent are you paying for it? Feel free to answer the question. Not 90. This isn't a discount. Discounts lower the price. Markups increase the price. It's 110%. Yeah, so this is going to increase because it's a markup. I probably... Should have underlined that so we can see that it's, it's a markup, it's not a discount problem. So, so I'm not going to subtract away from 100 like I did for discounts. I'm going to add on to 100. And so you're going to pay 110% of what they paid for it. So 110% of, and they paid $50 for it. Ella, what's 110% as a decimal? Slide that decimal back two spots. 1.1, 1. 1. good. We know of means times. Times 50. I'll go ahead and do 1.1 1. 1 times 50. Yep, so this is $55 is what we would pay for this item. Now, what would have happened if I didn't use the shortcut? Well, if I didn't use the shortcut, I would have done 10% instead of 110. I would have used 0.1 instead of 1.1. And 0.1 times 50 is five. Is $5 my answer? No, it's how much I'd have to increase it by. So $55, right? It just, using the shortcut, just avoids that possibility of accidentally putting five down as my answer and wondering why big ideas is saying wrong, 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 wrong. Well, you're not wrong. It does go up by $5, but it's asking you for the sale price, not the markup amount. Okay, so there's two homework problems done. Now, instead of finding discounts and markups, we're going to work backwards and I'm gonna ask you to find the original price. So it says, what is the original price of these shoes? It says these shoes are 40% off and you're now gonna pay $33 for them. That's not the original price, that's the new sale price. So to find the original price, one way that I could think about this is just like a per sentence. Now, if I'm going to do this though, I don't know if you're a big fan of using a shortcut or not, but you have to use the shortcut method to solve this problem. Meaning you can't use 40% off. You have to tell me what percent you're paying for these shoes. So what is 100% minus 40%? 60%, okay, so here's how, here's how I would think about this. The $33 that I'm gonna pay for those shoes right now, that's 60% of the original amount. So of what amount? And that's the question. That's the original and that's what I wanna find out. So I can turn this per sentence into an equation by changing the word is to what, Branson? Nope equals changing 60% to what Branson? 0.6 changing of to what Branson? Times. And then you could use A for amount. You could use O for original. Well, O is a bad variable to use. O looks a lot like a zero. I might avoid that. Um, you could use X, W. I don't care what letter you use. 
Uh, I like using P when it says what percent, but this one doesn't say that. So I don't really care what letter you use for this. And so I, that turns this into an equation. And to solve for A in my equation, I don't multiply like I did for this problem and I did for that problem. I end up dividing by 0.6. So Hannah, what do you get for 33 divided by 0. 0.6? <clears throat> fifty-five dollars. The original price of these shoes were fifty-five dollars. Okay, so that's a lot to have to do to find the original price. You have to write a per sentence out, and then you have to convert that per sentence, and then you have to solve that the equation. There is a shortcut for this too, okay? So instead of have, having you take the original price and find the sale price after the discount, I'm asking you to take the discounted price and find the original price. That's having you go the opposite direction. So it makes sense that instead of multiplying, we would just have to divide. And if you do everything else like you did before, but just divide, you'll end up with that answer and you don't have to write this all out. So since you're working backwards, to find the original price, divide by the percent paid instead of multiplying. So now let's look at homework question number 10 from yesterday's homework. Complete the table. Again, they give you the sale price. This is the discounted price. They say it was 5% off. By the way, how big of a discount are you expecting if you see 5% off? Not much. So the original price is gonna be just a little bit higher. Than what, the original, than what the sale price is, because it wasn't really discounted that much. And so I'm gonna work backwards and that's why we're gonna divide. But you have to use the shortcut method. You have to tell me if it was 5% off, what percent are you paying on this then? 95%. So take the sale price of $57 and don't multiply it by 95%, divide it by 95%. Maddie Yen says, what's 95% as a decimal? Okay, and then go ahead and divide 57 divided by 0.95. That's gonna give us our original price of this item. $60, okay. So don't get confused. I really did the exact the last two problems the exact same way i just didn't write as much the second time i don't need to convert it to a percentage if i just remember i'm working backwards just divide i know i wrote a lot more work up there but all i really did is i took the original the, the sale price i divided it by 60 percent, so we had to subtract 40 percent away from 100 and that's right there is how I got my 55. And that right there is all, I, I did the exact same thing. I divided and that's how I got my $60, okay? So you don't need to write it all out. If you just remember, I'm just gonna divide the dollar amount by the percent that I paid for it. Not the percent I'm saving. If you subtract, if, if you divide by 0.05, you get it wrong. Divide by 0.95 and you'll get it right. You may want to have these notes up split screen as you're working through your big ideas homework not only because there's good examples in here, but because there's lots of homework problems we've done so far, and we're going to do more, including the next one and the next uh, type of problem you're gonna see. So we, they're gonna ask you to find the discount. They're gonna ask you to find the markup. They're gonna ask you to find the, uh, the original price. And you'll also see questions where they ask you to find the percent of the discount. The original price of your meal at Buffalo Wild Wings is $60. After applying a coupon, your meal costs $45. What is the percent off? from that coupon. They're not asking you how much money you saved. They're asking you what percent you saved. How much money did this coupon save you? This isn't a difficult question. It's $15, it saved you $15, okay? That's not what percent it saved you, but that's what dollar amount it saved you, okay? We need to find out what percent it is. So basically what we have here is $60, going to $45. Well, you guys have already done this. If a number 
goes to another number and you're supposed to find out what percent it changed by? Sounds a lot like percent of change, doesn't it? This is just a percent of change problem. And percent of change is what over what? Difference over original. So I'm just going to abbreviate difference. Difference over original. It's the same thing. Yeah, this is, this is like taking us back a homework, right? Or, or the worksheet we just turned into. So difference. How much did you say it lowered our bill by? 15. That's our difference. So, so if $60 is decreasing to $45, that is a difference of 15. The original price of the meal was 60. I divide 15 by 60 to get 0 0.25. And Addison, what percent would 0 0.25 be? 25%, exactly. So there's my answer. These are kind of like, I mean, I like discount questions because I don't think they're difficult to do, but you've already done these. So when you get to your homework tonight and you see problems where the middle box is missing, the percent of the discount, that's just a percent change. That's why you need to know percent change, especially if you're going to be a manager or an owner of your own business one day. Because if, you, if you're like, okay, how much can I sell this for and still make a profit? Okay, I can sell it for $45. Well, what am I going to advertise in my commercials? How about 25% off, right? It'd be nice to know what percent to discount it by so that you know you're getting that the amount of money you want to get on it. Okay, so that's just 25%. Okay, treat it like it's a percentage change question. So now we've got two more homework questions I want to look at, and we can look at more if we have extra time, um, whatever ones you guys have if you've already started this homework. So this is number 21. Now, the reason I put number 21 and 23 on here is because it'd be really easy to guess and check and not actually learn anything from this. I was having a conversation with some eighth graders yesterday. They said, yeah, we only get one check answer in eighth grade. So be prepared for that next year. Yeah, they get one check answer on their big ideas homeworks for each question, which means if you had a multiple choice one like this, you can't just guess, check, guess, check, guess, you can guess and check, and then, well, I guess you got it narrowed down to three, but so you actually do have to show your work, and, and that's what I want you guys to practice doing here. I want you to under, understand the problems, and so number 21 here, here says, the scooter is on sale for 90% off the original price. That is a massive discount. It says, which of the methods can you use to find the sale price? So let's read these. You tell me which of these you could use. Multiply 0.4585, that's the price of the, uh, or 45.85, that's the price of the scooter. Multiply it by 0.9. You could multiply $45.85 by 0.9 and then add that back onto 45.85. You could multiply 45.85 by 0.1 or multiply 45.85 by 0.9 and then subtract from 45.85. Which of those methods could I use? Lucas, give me one. Bottom left. That is correct. This would be our shortcut method. If the scooter is 90% off, then Lucas, what percent are we paying for it? We're going to pay 10%, which as he said, is going to be 0.1. So if you take 0.1 times the price of the scooter, that jumps us right to the cost that we're going to pay for it, okay? Or is there another one that we could do? Aiden? Bottom right would work. You could multiply by the percent of the discount, which is 90%. That won't give you the price of the scooter. It'll tell you how much you're gonna save. So then it says, subtract that from 4585 and that would work. The one above it says add. That's what you would do if it was a markup. And this isn't a markup. So I don't wanna choose that one. Yeah, so that one also works. Now, why would someone wanna choose the shortcut? What does the shortcut do? Makes, why does it make it easier? It's shorter, yeah. The one method requires only one step instead of using two steps. So now let's find the price of the scooter. If it's 10% off, 
or 0.1 times 45.85, then Hunter, tell me what that cost would be. Okay, now with dollar amounts, we always round to two decimal places. So can you round that to two decimal places for me? Not 4.58. You're forgetting to look at the third decimal place. I don't need it, but I got to look at it. What's that five do? Yes, it's going to bump the eight up to what? To a nine, yeah. So what the store would actually charge for this then is four dollars and fifty nine cents. Okay, Laney. Yeah. Or actually, Laney, you might want to wait one more problem because we'll be done, and then you can have that one. Okay. <clears throat> Number twenty three. A one hundred and twenty nine dollar fifty cent stereo is discounted forty percent off next month. The sale price is discounted sixty percent off. Is the stereo now free? Why would someone think that it's free? The sixteen forty, yeah. So if it's discounted forty percent and then discounted sixty percent, that's like discounting hundred percent, right? No. It's not free, right? That that wouldn't make sense. And the reason it's not free is because you have to think of this as two separate problems. So when it said the stereo is discounted forty percent off, like right there, I you just draw a line. That's that's my first problem. So let's find out what the price of the stereo is if I were to buy it right then. Um, if it's 40% off, what percent would I pay on it? If it's 40% off, what percent would I pay on it? 60, 100 minus 40 is I'd pay 60%. And so what 60% is a decimal? 0.6 times 129.50. Andrea, can you tell me what 0.6 times 129.50 would be? Got it. Okay, so $77.70. Okay. Now, that's what I would pay for if I bought it then. Now it says next month, it's been discounted 60% off. Not 60% off the original price, but the 60% off the new sale price. So now I'm gonna do 60% off of that. So again, if it's 60% off, what percent am I paying on it then? You're paying 40% of the new price. So now we're gonna do 0.4, 40% times the new price and it's gonna lower it more, but it's not gonna make it free. Frank, what is 0.4 times 77.70? 31 31.08, so $31.08, .08, and that is one of our choices. I better not see number 23 on your work paper as just D. I want to see this work here because that's how you get the $31.08. All right. So make sure you're copying your work, not only for number 23, but for number 21. We also did number 14. We also did number 10. We also did number 17 and eight. Make sure you copy that over onto your work papers. And you guys have 10 minutes to be working on this homework. Get started.